Well, man cavers, what are we doing today? We're going to do a little lawnmower repair. Here we have an Atku Viscount 19SE. Mm, I wonder if that's got electric windows. Ha. Anyhow, she don't start. She's key start as well, which is good. You just turn the old key and the electro digitals fire the starter motor and she should fire off. All she does is turn and don't start. So, let's get on with this. Roll the credits. Aha! Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. Well, I know these engines pretty damn well. Briggs and Stratton and Quantum engines, I absolutely love them. I think our problem is just going to be carb, because this mower has not been used since last year, so it's been sitting about a year. So, we need to get this carb off, give her a little blowout. Now, top tip with these haters, or haters at cause these quantum engines, sorry, they do not have a fuel tap on the fuel pipe. So, as soon as you pull the pipe off the carb, all your petrol's going to come out. So we either need to drain the tank, or we need to tip the mower slightly on its side, so the petrol don't come out of the outlet. Now the simplest way is to just tip the mower on its side. Problem with that is, you can then get oil run into the um, exhaust, and into the cylinder, and then that'll either foul the plug up, and it won't start, or it'll start and smoke like hell because it's filled all the exhaust port up with oil. So best thing to do to avoid that, and we're going to do the whole tip it on its side thing. Whoops, let me zoom out. Get your mower, pull your dead man, and just pull the engine over till that's on compression. There, we're on compression. Now we're off. We're on compression. Now we know both valves are shut, no oil can now get through. So now we can tip the mower slightly on its side and the petrol won't leak out of the pipe. Top tip, make sure it's on compression. There we go, so we're going to be working on it on this angle to a degree. So we need an 8 mil for that little nipper. You can do them with a screwdriver, but I often find an 8 mil is much, much better. Where's my little thing? Here we go. So let's just get this buzzed off, see what the air filter is like while we're in here. Oh my word! Now that's not going to help things whatsoever. Right, that could have been a lot of our problems. Now we have two 8 mils under here, look, for this plastic cover. These just screw on the front of the carb. We might have to just take this plastic off the top so you can see a bit more and get the linkages off. So take these three bolts out of here. So there's two go into the carb, and then you've got another one which goes onto this metal bracket, which is this one here. Yeah. Come on. I really ought to get one of them little battery ratchets or impact drivers that everybody seems to be using these days. Apart from me, who's still stuck on a quarter drive ratchet. Ah. There we go. Now this little plastic will come off with the breather. The breather pipe goes on the back there. Look at the state of that. We've got to do some cleaning. Ah. Right. Ugh. 
Right, we're gonna just get off while we're in here. Just gonna whip this plastic cover off. Yeah, that will that's not part of the tank, so that'll come off with two screws, hopefully. These are normally quite straightforward to get off and getting past the rope as well. There we go. Oh, good job we had that off. Look at all the leaves in there. I think we need to give this a good blowout as well. All in that shroud there is dead grass. All down here, dead grass, dead leaves. Have you a look in there, look. Look at all that stuff in there. Fluffy could have had a nest. You just never know, do you? Well, there we go. All right, I think we need to blow that off before we start undoing carburetor bolts so we can see what we're doing. Let me get the compressor on. So we're going to go proper blowout on this because I have a feeling the heater vanes in the engine are all going to be um, blocked up. So this is not going to heat very well. Not going to heat, not going to cool very well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to buzz off the rest of this stuff here. So we're going to take the tank off and various other bits and pieces so we can get to it properly and give this thing a damn good blowout. These are very simple again, all 8mm. And then there's one 13 which is under there with a spacer. And you need to remember, guys, put that spacer back. So our whole tip and the thing on the side is not going to be relevant now because we are going to take the tank off because I think this needs a proper service. So when you take your lawnmower for a service and people say, why do you have your service? There's not really a lot to do to them. Well, when you service them properly for somebody, there is quite a bit you have to do to them. And this can be it. See, there's a... I thought I was a 13. Mistake, that's a 10. There's a 10 mil under there, which you'll need to get to with an extension. And there'll be a plastic spacer as well. So when you pull the bolt out, there will be a little spacer. There we go. See, there's a little spacer there that that bolt go through, and that go between the bracket of your tank and your engine block. If you don't put that spacer back in, you're likely to crack the fuel tank. So our fuel tank is now loose, look, as you can see. Gosh, he's a heavy old bug of these. Plastic decks, but still very heavy. So we need to take the fuel pipe off, but to start with, let's just blow around that fuel pipe. Just so we can get this fuel pipe off properly. Where are my pliers? I've got pin nose pliers and not standards. Right, here we are. I've got a pair of nippers that will get these clips off just perfect. Give them a nip, give them a pull, get your pliers, give the pipe a little twist to break that original seal, and then the tank will come off. There we go. He can now sit out of the way. Just leave him hanging. He won't hurt at all. Oh my word, let's have a closer look around this engine. There we go. You can see she is, there's our starter gear, give us a chance to inspect that. Maybe put a little bit of oil on our starter gear. Yeah, there's a lot of grass and crap. So we can get this top cover off now. Again, really simple, there's a bolt here. Look at the state of that. And a bolt there, and then the dipstick. Let's give him a blow. And this one. Yeah. So undo that one, that one. Two at the front here. And then our dipstick, which is that one. 
So let's get them off. Let me put you back in here. I'm going to try and zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. So we've got two tens at the front, which we had for the tank bolt. Buzz these tens out. So I say, this is what go into a proper mower service. It's not just a case of changing the oil and plug and sharpening the blades and putting an air filter in it. When you service a mower properly, this is what you have to do. So it's just these four tens. If you're wondering where I'm putting them bolts, I'm putting them in the air filter cover. There we go. And then there's a little 8 mil. Is that an 8 or is that a quarter? No, that is an 8. Sometimes there's a little tiny quarter on these. But this is an 8 in the top of the dipstick. So you take that little dipstick ball out. And the whole dipstick will pull out of the engine like so. There you go, and check our oil level while we're at it. <laughs> right. Now this top cover should just lift off. It isn't because that little throttle control is holding it. So we need to undo this little throttle clamp as well, look. There you go. We just slackened it. There we go, that's that off. There. This is exactly why we needed to give this a good blowout. Because you don't want to be leaving this stuff in there. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you will think, hang on, there's your coil. So what's this bit I see around here? Well, because this more of electric start, this is a charging system, so that's basically an alternator. But we want to blow all this grass out. All right from around that soil. And all down there. Look. This is a particularly bad one. Because you can see in there is all your cooling fins for your engine, which keeps the engine cool. And if they're all blocked up with grass, you can't keep cool properly. Look down there, there's still grass wedged down there. We've got to make sure that's all right. But that will probably come out better once we've got the carb off. And then another thing to check. These bolts, they are inlet manifold. It's not uncommon for them to come loose. And then your inlet manifold is loose. And then she'll start drawing air in and she won't run properly. So let's get this carb off. Now we've got that blown out that much. 
and then you'll notice we'll be able to get all that grass out there so it's a 10 mil again one bowl under here like I said before do not be frightened of carburetors they are very very simple now I don't expect this carburetor to be particularly dirty perhaps but it will have probably remnants of last year's fuel in there and if that's the old stuff with ethanol then that could well have taken water in so just take the two bolts out Take your carb off, unhook your linkage. There's your carb. Now before we take out the bits, we just want to pull this metal plate back a little tiny bit. Which is undoing one bolt. There is another bolt behind the starter, we can leave that. We just want to undo this one bolt. And that metal plate will pull back just enough so we can blow that grass out from behind it. That tin shroud under there is clear of grass as well. There you go. There you go. That's got all that grass out. go I'm not saying this mower would have overheated but that lot certainly would not have helped it so put that bolt back in so you don't forget it because you don't need that out anymore note that I haven't disconnected the spring or the linkage all I've done is took the linkage here off the top of the carburetor that's it now while we've got the airline we'll just get our air box Blow him out. There we go. All in there. Yeah. Now we'll clean the air filter out. You can replace them, they're very cheap. Blow that off. Blow it out. So Give them a little bend. There we go. So these are cheap to replace, but I understand a lot of people might want to service the mower at home and they haven't got a new air filter. As long as they're not flooded with oil. You can normally blow them out and they'll be fine. Say, so, this is not a spaceship. We're not going to the moon in it. It's just a lawnmower. We're blowing out our recoil. Right, let's get this carb to bits and give that a little, just want to blow it out inside. So let's get up on the bench and we'll be doing that. So we're back with our carb. All we want here is a 13, which goes on the bottom. Let's just get the airline and blow all the dust off this table. There we go. You do really want a lovely clean work surface when you're doing carburetors. I've got a little clear catch can there so we can catch the petrol what comes out of this thing. But we want to really try and catch that so we can see if there's any anomalies in there, any water. So just let him drain out.
Phew. Yeah. That's got that lot drained. Right. Look at all the crud. What's got in that what in that carb? Can you see that? There's stuff look. All bits in there. That all come out of that carb look. Which is not good, is it? So now there's a little pin here. We just want to pull this little pin out and the flute will come out with the needle on it. Like so. And there is our carb flute and needle. Leave him be. And this is the bit we want to blow out. Now as you can see, there's a little bit of black in there. There's a little red seal in the bottom of that float. That's the needle seat. Do not blow from this way. Because you're likely to blow that red seal clean out. You'll lose it. You won't realise you have lost it. You'll put it back together. And then that'll flood. So just put that over. Give her a little blow through. All the little jets. Under your throttle. There we go. That carp has now blown out and cleaned out. Blow your float off. That's just going to get all that dust and stuff out of there. Now you'll probably find your needle will drop off your float. Don't worry about it. All it does is hook over look. I'll try and do it. There we go. That hooks in there and like that look and that just hang. And you drop him back in there, making sure he's still hooked up to the float. Push your little pin through. There's nothing hold that little pin. That's just loose look. Which is perfectly normal. Put your float bowl hold that in. Now look in that float bowl. Look at that crap in there. Look. Crap in there. Gel. That is old ethanol petrol. Blow that out. There we go. And then get a rag, or I'll use a bit of clean tissue, and just wipe out that bowl. There we go. Now we can just plump him back on. Put our nut back in. And then we're pretty much ready. There is also a hole in that nut look. In the bottom. And a little hole in the side. I forgot them. So we need to just blow them out. There we go. There we go. So we got him screwed back in. Who has got a fire around here that stinks? Why now? Somebody's got a bonfire going on. Now once you've had these carved bits, check and double check. There's nothing left on your bench that you haven't put back in. But they're pretty simple. I say don't be frightened of carburetors, guys. They are really not that scary. Right, let's get back over to the mall and get this back on. Right, here we go. We're back on here. 
first thing to do is hook your throttle linkage back on. That's hooked on, push the carb in place. And then it's base, basically reverse of what we just done. Putting the tens back in. There we go. I don't know how many of you guys are going to forward through half of this. Because you're like, ah, oh, he's not forwarding through any of this. <laughs> well, I've been told by some of you guys, you're not too keen when I fast forward through. You're not too keen on me placing little fast forwarded bits with the music. And I basically do this because I like it. And I like that you guys like it, so we'll carry on doing that how you want to do it. So we'll just check your throttle is now working on your governor, which it is, look. There we go. We have a leaf under here. And a bit more crap, I've just noticed. There we go. A little bit under that coil. Right, I think now we need to, you don't particularly want to oil them starter rings up too much. I'll tell you for why, because that can actually make them sticky. So then they attract grass. But please do give them a good clean. All around these gears. And just make sure that works freely which it does look that is perfect so now we can get our engine cover back on got that back on get your four ten mils which you've hopefully put safe buzz them back in there's one in there's two in there's three in and there's four in. And no, I haven't forgotten to put the dipstick back in either. And put these bolts all in loose before you go and tighten them up. Because if you put two in first and tighten them up, that'll probably push the other ones out so you can't get them in. So right, them two are tightened. Making sure you don't trap any wires. I say this engine's a little bit different to the one your lawnmower's probably got simply because, simply because, I think we might have had different length bolts in there, you know. Let me just check we ain't got too long and too short. Ah, you have, look. That's a good job I twigged that. See how them bolts are just a tiny bit shorter. That's because they're needed for these back holes, the shorter one. There we go. Good job I twigged that up. Because obviously this front one can take slightly longer bolts than the back. There we go. 
Don't forget your dipstick. Give that a blow off all around that rubber seal. Give him a little wipe off. And then plop him back in the dipstick hole. There we go. And then we can put our little eight mil with the collar back in the dipstick. That's got the little collar so it don't nip it. The last thing you want is to nip it. So now we're all back on eight mil for a bit until we put our tank back on. So here's our eights with all our little collars. They hold that one on. Right. Da, da, da. We can now put the tank back on. Remember what I said about that's going to leak petrol. So get it roughly in place and quickly put your fuel pipe on first thing. There we go. And then you can spike your time manipulating it back into place. And drop our little eight back in. Yes, we are going to do an oil change, but I want to make sure this mower actually runs before we change the oil. So we're dropping our eights back in there. Again, get them started, but don't tighten them. That one started. That started. That started, because you want a little bit of wiggle room in your tank to get your spacer back in. And it's really hard to show you where that spacer goes. And you aren't going to see it on camera, because you can hardly see it. But it goes, you'll have to trust me on this, it goes between the engine block and the tank. So you just want to put that in and line it up. And then we drop our bolt back in. And believe me, these are not the easiest to do. This is the trickiest part, really, of the whole job, is getting that tank bolt back in. Come on. Right, we're going through the spacer. Put the 10 back on. There you go. There you go. Right. That's got that back in. And we just need to now tighten that 10 up, tighten all these eights up. We have a dripping carb. I reckon our needle and seat weren't right. We want to just check, make sure that ain't dripping again. Alright, let's just blow around this cap. Get any final bit of dust off. So that needle and seat, it's probably just what a little tap to realign it. Because that's not dripping now, look. So we want the back plate of our carb on next. No, that's not dripping now. So he comes in here like so. Getting your breather pipe back on. Yeah. And then we've got our little eight mils again. There we 
we go. Where's that little eight mil socket gone? Can you see that? Can you see that little eight mil socket? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, here it is. I'm kneeling on the damn thing. There we go. We'll buzz them back in. Tell you what I didn't do. I didn't put the fuel pipe clamp back on. Which I should have done before I put the air filter on, shouldn't I? There you go, she's on. Right now we can get our top cover back on. Which is here with two screws. And some bird poo. Lovely. That can be a bit of a mission just to line these screw holes back up. Well, I got that one lined back up. And that one lined up. There we go. Well, that's our cover back on. Yeah, we haven't got any drips. Plump your air filter in. The air filter cover. Lord out. Put him in. You can actually put that air filter, if you want, in there first, which can make it a bit easier sometimes. Just drop him in. Hook him. There we go. There we are. Right. <clears throat> Let us just buzz the plug out. And have a look at the condition of your plug. Just make sure now that plug is a little bit black and sooty. So, but the rest of it actually looks really good. So I'm just going to wire wheel this up. And then we'll put it back in. So we've wire wheeled our plug back up. Here. Yeah. Now okay, that ain't she cleaned up nice. Now, another thing noteworthy, just because you want to service your lawnmower every year, don't mean you have to replace a load of parts every year. If you cut your, little, if you cut your lawn once a week for five, six months of the year, the likelihood is you're not going to ruin the plug. It might be a bit dirty, it might be a bit sooty. Clean it up, put it back in. Just because you service something don't mean it's replacing parts every time, just like an air filter. That air filter will do another season, now it's been blown out. They will get to the point where they're so dirty that's not worth doing them, but you don't have to replace parts. It's clean what's there, guys. But you should do this to your mower every year, either before you put it away in the winter, or at the start of every season, before you start using it. Some of my customers haven't done last thing, so they're ready for the spring. Some haven't done in the spring. Long as it is wide, but it's always advisable not to leave petrol in them all year. If you do have them serviced before the at the end of the season, run them out of petrol before you before you stand them up for the winter, especially this stuff with ethanol. So we're back together. Let's now see 
What's going on here? What's going on here? My camera's on the dodge. There we go. Let's now see if she'll start. And we're going to try it on the key start as well. Give her a few primes. Five or six is normally plenty good enough. And we'll see if that'll start on the key. Oops, I think we need more throttle actually. The non-start and Atco, once I give a full throttle, started straight up from cold on the key. Check for leaks. So that little petrol drip we had was obviously that needle and seat just wanted a little tap of the screwdriver to reseat it after we'd had it the bit. Sometimes happens, sometimes it don't. There we go. So, long drawn out video. But that is how you do an annual service on a Briggs and Stratton engine. And them little three and a half horsepower ones with the little primer bulb on the side. That much easier. This is a complex quantum engine because it's got the electric start and that separate little generator on there. But that is basically how you give a quantum engine a full service. Obviously, we've got to change the oil, which is just running it till that get hot. Take your dipstick filler out, shove the mower on its side, remembering to put it on compression stroke first so it don't fill the exhaust up. Walk away, have a cup of tea, come back, put the mower back down, and shove about three quarters of a litre of petrol. Um, petrol? Three quarters of a litre of oil in there. That is it. That is how you service a Briggs & Stratton quantum engine. To me, these are one of the best engines Briggs & Stratton ever made. I absolutely love quantum engines. Well prefer them over a Honda. Now, a lot of people are going to hate me here. But Hondas, oh, they are reliable. Ultra reliable. But when they go wrong, they can be a pain in the ass to fix. Briggs and Stratton's are very, very simple. And to me, these Quantums run any bit as good as a Honda when they're running right. And to be honest with you, if you do what I've just done, clean that carb out, make sure all your gaskets are good, clean your plug, good air filter, they are sweet as a nut, them engines. If you do get any vibration of them, it's more than likely the blade on the bottom is out of balance, not the engine. So, yeah, pretty good. And that one being key start as well, even better. That's something someone who's a bit weak in the arm can use. Being key start, really good. Right, that's going to be it for this video. I'm off. I've got to clean that bird poo off there. It's really doing my head in. Right. Bye-bye for now. Ha-ha! Look at that bird poop.